Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, I'd like to start off with a confession. And it's simply that there are so many of you in this room who knew Sheshe better than I did. What I'm about to do is to make a statement which would add to all the other statements which have been made. Now, I'm inclined to believe what Tia said this evening. And that's about whether we can say goodbye to Sheshe or not. I think that it is impossible to say goodbye to Sheshe because he planted so many human seeds which have germinated and continue to grow and will carry on the struggle until final victory. A man like that does not die. The other difficulty that I have this evening is that in talking about Sheshe, it is very difficult to find the appropriate words and the ability to string them together to give a clear picture of who Sheshe was. So I would not even attempt to do that. I'll just speak from the bottom of my heart. To describe Sheshe as a founding member of the Movement for Freedom and Justice is to make an understatement, because it was far more than that. I recall that around 1986, we decided to put together an alliance of left forces to begin the struggle for a return to bourgeois democracy. And we started off with the African Youth Command, the United Revolutionary Front, and the Kwame Nkrumah Revolutionary Guards. Now, this was the time that some of our excellent comrades who had worked in the PND system were also exiting. And it was only natural that we made approaches to them to join this broad alliance. Now, significantly, when our friends from the New Democratic Movement joined, they insisted that we could build a bigger and broader alliance to enhance our strength. And Shesha was one of those who insisted that the alliance we had built was so narrow and that we could broaden the alliance to include the existing so-called political tradition of the Dankwa Buzia tradition and the Nkrumah's front and so on. So we got to work. Indeed, I can say with certainty that Sheshe and a few comrades, including many who have never been mentioned before, and I see one in this room, Ambassador Cabrera Be Amihia, were those who recruited Professor Edubuahini into the movement. So Sheshe did not only develop the concept, did not help us to build the structures and so on, he also participated actively in recruiting the leadership of the movement. And I recall that night when we went to the house of Professor Edubuahini, and he was not sure, he was hesitating. He took Ambassador Cabral be and me here, Sheshe and others, to convince him that the course we are about to pursue was a worthy course. The other distinguishing thing about Sheshe was that he was an extraordinary worker. No work was too small for him. No work was dirty for him. He did everything. And indeed, my witness is Akunu Dake. We were then publishing things that would be considered subversive in those days. And we needed to find a place to print them. And we had this old Tycho Stalin machine. And we decided to put that machine in the boys' quarters of Akunu Dake, for good reason. Because he was still a public servant, and publicly perceived to be loyal to the regime, 
Nobody was going to his house to search and find the things that we were doing. And Positious brilliant idea that this whole stycostyle machine should be planted in Akunu Dakes boys' quarters. And Shishi, unlike other leaders, will spend the whole night from about 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. just rolling the machine. Never got tired. The other thing about Shishi, which is also extremely remarkable, is that he never got tired. So we would meet up to about midnight, and then in the morning by 9 a.m., Shishi's statement, embodying all the things that we are discussing, we had been discussing the night before, will be ready before us. I can say that about 90% of all the statements that were read and published in the name of leaders of the pro-democracy movement at that time came from the pen and brain of Shishi. And that's a fact. I also worked with Shishi in the Alliance for Change. And up to today, many people describe me and others as founders of the Alliance for Change. It is not true. It's a small group of friends of Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu who met at the residence of Ejiri Blanks, who today is a member of the Council of State, to celebrate the birthday of Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu. It was there that the idea of forming the Alliance for Change came up. I was invited to join the Alliance for Change by Uncle Shane. So he was ahead of those of us who were described as founding members and so on. I can again say that in spite of the information which is available in the public about who did what and so on, Shishi was the engine of Alliance for Change. Again, he wrote more than 90% of all the statements we issued including those who were read by Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. And he worked so hard to keep the movement going. There's one last thing that I'd like to say. We were in prison with Shishi on a number of occasions, Edua Mankwa and others. And on one occasion, they are taking us to the north. Me and Shishi have been taken to the north. But they dropped Sheshe at the Tamale prison and they continued and dumped me at the Navrungo prison. I think we were in prison for about six months then. So one night I was informed by the warders that we were going to be released and sent back to Accra. So they brought me to the Tamale prison and I saw Sheshe. And I told Sheshe, Sheshe, it appears that the next day we are going to be released. And can you imagine what this thought was? So she said, he said, why? Why are they releasing us? I have just started studying French. <laughs> and he was an amazing character. He loved to read anything and everything. And he saw prison. He was not afraid of prison. He saw prison as an opportunity to improve his knowledge and his skills in French and felt disturbed that the authorities who had detained him were in a hurry to release him. Tonight, all we can do is to say that the deeds of Shishi, his thoughts and his spirit and I don't mean spirit in the sense that most of you think spirits are. I completely reject that notion of spirits and human beings and so on. It doesn't make any sense at all. But tonight, the spirit of Shishi, tonight, his works, his dreams and so on, all we can say is that they should continue to inspire us to continue the struggle to build a better world. 
A better world in which no child will go to bed on an empty stomach. A better world in which we have sensible leaders who would not spend our resources making nuclear bombs, but would spend our resources producing food and medicine for our people. It is possible to achieve victory, and we will certainly be victorious. Thank you very much.